Hi everyone, welcome into <laughs> My Chamber TV, the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly. It's great to be with you because we are introducing for the very first time the Tarpon Chamber of Commerce. I have a couple of very special guests with me right now. We want to introduce our president and CEO, Miss Jane Hungerville. Did I get it? Oh, you got it right. I got it. I got it. All right. And then we also have Jim Grant, who has been a longtime member, right? Correct. And you deserve congratulations because you just won the Medium Business of the Year Award. Congratulations. I did. Thank you very much for that. Good. So tell me a, l a little bit about your involvement with the Chamber. You've been there for what, did you say seven years I before think, the yeah, show? Yeah, but roughly seven years now with the Chamber. The last three years I've been uh, on the Board of Directors and uh, I also am the Chairman of the Ambassadors Club, which is a group that goes out and meets with local business people about joining the Chamber and their experience with the Chamber. So. It's, it's, been, it's been very positive for me, the whole experience. It's my networking group. That's how I network in town. That's how I meet business people and spread the word about what I do in my job. I love how you said my networking group. That is truly taking ownership, yeah. isn't it, Gene? Now, Gene, you've been with them for right around a year. You're just having your that. anniversary. Um, it was a year in March. So, so you a have over here. So how exciting is that? Congratulations. New to Florida as well. So I'm learning not only the roadways, but the people and um, my new members and board members and, and forging a new um, path for the chamber. Well, that's exciting. So with having the amount of time that you've been involved with the chamber, the different events that go on in the neighborhood is really it, would you say that after all this time, for anybody that's thinking of becoming a member and to promote their business, that, that to get involved, don't just pay your dues, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, have to, you have to give back. Uh, you have to give what you, what you want to get. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the main thing. It's a two-way street. We have lots of opportunities for local business people to interact with the chamber through um, morning coffees, um, afternoon luncheons, evening business after hours networking. We have lots of other events that we put on throughout the year. I'm sure Gene will tell you all about the art festival that we run every year. It's the biggest in West Florida. So there's a lot that we do, um, but I've gotten a whole lot out of it. I, you know, I can walk through town now. I know everybody. Doesn't that feel good? It's wonderful. It's I like, love it. It's like, a, it's like a family business. It's like one big mm -hmm. family in the sure. community. Yeah. And isn't that what it's like? Because as they say, you, you want to do business with people you know, like, and trust, right? Correct. That, mm -hmm. That's that favorite phrase. And, and there's a lot of truth to that, too, when you can run into people in the yeah. neighborhood that you know or, or, or somebody is out and they're talking about you and you know, giving your name out for insurance. Tell me about your insurance company. Well, I run an independent insurance agency in the area of health and life. Okay. Probably 90% of our business is Medicare health plans. So ah. we do a lot of senior marketing. Um, we work with lots of seniors. We, I have uh, 18 agents. They range from Spring Hill to Sarasota and all through the Tampa area. Um, but the neat thing for my agency is nobody has to sign contracts to work with me. So all the agents stay for the value proposition and for the training that we provide and we have a good strong client base people stay with us a lifetime really mm. and they stay with us a long time mm -hmm. so um, i've been doing that now for 18 years and we moved our offices into tarpon about five and a half years ago i was in tarpon living there but finally set up an office right in town so now people know where to walk in and find me 
can't that, hide anymore. That's great. And yeah, you know, when it comes to insurance, unless you have somebody that you can exactly. really sit and talk to, it's just like a different language to me. It's, you know, it takes it so to talk to an expert that really knows and can explain and just really make you feel more comfortable whether to change or not to change, stay with what you have, what the latest is. And I mean, that takes a lot of uh, updated education on your part, well, too. It well, it does. He's also incredibly patient because when I moved here and I had to move all of my insurance, we went through a lot of, of information exchange, a mm -hmm. lot of questions, and then he came up with some ideas and questions that I hadn't even thought of. So it made yeah. the transition very yeah. easy. And that's what it takes. We really consider ourselves advisors. And the people that we work with, they're welcome to come into our office anytime with questions or some of my clients bring their mail <laughs> with a big stack and a big smile. And, you know, can you look through this and oh see what my. I've got here? You know? I did that. So. Did you? It's yeah. probably something I would do, too. <laughs> yeah, so, because they're, uh, seniors are bombarded, as you know, in many industries, but sure. in the insurance industry especially. They're, they're being called on the phone. They have people knocking on their doors. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't know who to trust. You know, so that's true. We try to provide an environment where, where they know that they're, they have somebody that cares about them and they can come in and take care of business. Exactly. And you know, I, when the seniors add a few years to their lives, sometimes it's a little bit harder, you know, when we get older and to really try to understand some of this stuff on our own. So it's good to have uh, someone absolutely. like you. Absolutely. And and people keep taking the paper away, which we all grew up with, and they expect you all to go onto internet websites and places like I that to, to get your information. And it's difficult for elderly people. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I'm glad that you bring that up because this is a perfect reason for you to get a hold of Jim if you have any questions and there's no charge to come in and sit and chat with you. Not and no charge at all for anything. So get your stack of mail and call Jim, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but really, you've got to understand that because heaven forbid that if something was to happen in your life experience and you need that insurance, you want to make sure that you are covered because all of that little fine print and if you don't understand it, and even the, the, the best person in the whole world that might think they understand something, when it comes right down to brass tacks when you have mm -hmm. an issue, mm -hmm. then it's, oh, it's not what you thought. So that's, that's really good to know. How has the chamber, um, wh what are some of the events uh, that, just give us a couple of specifics, because I know that Gene is going to be covering some things throughout the show that you can get involved in. What's happening in our community? It's, it's great. Right. Well, uh, the first, should I go over the the main events that, that you run? No, I won't. I'm, I'll Talk just tell you about one. and what the ambassadors are doing. That's, well, that's yeah. really something. Oh, the, yeah. the ambassadors uh, had really become kind of inactive in Tarpon, and we tried to rejuvenate them. Uh, we call it the Ambassadors Club now. Um, the people have to be voted in to be an ambassador. Oh. They have to understand uh, what the chamber requirements are, what the chamber can offer to a business, and willing to take the time to get up out of their desk or you know wherever and go out and meet with people. So the the ambassadors club really is uh, an outreach from the chamber to make sure that our current members are happy and getting the services that they expect that new businesses understand the value of becoming a member chamber and what we can bring to the table for them in terms of really elevating their visibility and their business. And then some fun that we can provide for them as well, like the scavenger photo, photo scavenger hunt that we have coming up in September. That's an ambassador event where uh, everybody goes out and tries to get their pictures taken doing crazy odd things around town and bringing all that back. So. We get we have fun as well. That's exciting. They're, I look extra faces for the chamber because I can't be out everywhere, I, and no, they're really no, that's valuable. That's true. Yeah, it really is. How many are how many members are um, are, are ambassadors? Right now, there's just ten. It's very see. very small at just this point, but we, we just mm -hmm. restarted it. And as I said, we're we're screening. You know, everybody can throw on a badge and call themselves this or that, but we want people that are going to get involved, mm -hmm. they're, they're willing to do the work because it's a face-to-face -face thing. It's not sending emails or letters, it's getting out and going to offices and sitting down 
with a business owner to find out how his business is doing. What does he need? How can the chamber help him? Can we, can we do a blast for an event for him on our chamber newsletter? Or can we, would he like to have a ribbon cutting so that we bring people in his front door so everybody can see where he is and what he does? All of those kinds of things, especially ribbon cuttings for new businesses are very important. And I'll tell you, there's so much to do in Tarpon Springs. I'm so glad to see that um, you're here where we can raise, raise the awareness for you and your businesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, congratulations. It's, it's so great to meet you and have you on the show and be part of, part well, of our, our raising the awareness for Tarpon Springs. So we have about a minute remaining. Um, what, just give me one big, great gusto of a point with your business and what you love about it. Well, what I love about my business is that I'm helping people. I was in the pharmaceutical business in corporate life for 20 years and came into this, and I really feel like I help people. Uh, I'm not out there trying to make a sale. I'm out there trying to help an individual get situated properly, and that's very fulfilling. It's very rewarding. Uh, and I'm also training agents to do the same thing. So we provide a lot of training for young agents coming in and it doesn't cost them anything and they don't have to sign any contracts and they can learn and grow a career on their own. So for me it's just been a very rewarding thing and I enjoy it. Bingo. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> now you see why they, he was chosen as this medium-sized business. I video. certainly Absolutely. do. Well, Jim, thank you so much for joining us. Jim Grant, if you want to dig up whatever questions you have and give him a call, it's been a pleasure. Uh, by all means, do that. The do number is 727-493-0937. Right there at the bottom. <laughs> Go figure. I never looked over there. <laughs> well, we're going to take a brief little time out. Gene's going to stay with us. We're going to hear mm -hmm. more about your position throughout the show. And we have more guests coming right after this here on My Chamber TV. I'm Jerry from Hot Locks Hair Salon. We are conveniently located at 13414 US Highway 19 in Hudson. I've been a local hairstylist in our community for the last 34 years, seven of which I was an educator. Our passion is the artistry of hair, and Hot Locks is here to help you achieve your perfect image. You can call us at 727-514-9978.
Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV. It is the heartbeat of the community here in Tampa Bay. I'm Barbara Marville Kelly, and we are featuring today the first time Tarpon Springs Chamber of Commerce, and we're announcing the businesses of the year, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce my new co-host. We have Miss Jean, <coughs> excuse me, Hungerville with me. Then we also have Cody Wenger, and I'm excited because Cody with Brookdale, Tarpon Springs Senior Living yep. Solutions, right? Yep. Congratulations. Could we get a bigger trophy oh, for you? Yeah. <laughs> you are just beaming from ear to ear. Congratulations. Large business of the year for over 20 employees for Brookdale in Tarpon Springs. Yeah. Yeah. So that's quite an accomplishment. How long have you been with Brookdale? I've actually been with Brookdale just going on about eight months now. No kidding. Yeah. So what a, what a great way to come right oh, out yeah. of the gate with a, with <laughs> a tr trophy yeah. like that. So just to give everyone an idea, the criteria uh, that these businesses are actually judged is mission and stability of the business and business practices, innovation of product or services mm -hmm. offered, active member of the community and leadership role of owner and or staff in civic activities gives generously of themselves and or staff in time and resources to the community and or chamber and i i mean this is just really resonating with me because this is how we we change things mm. in the world oh, is yeah. by doing all of this that's what this trophy means so congratulations tell Thank me about you. your short time over there i know it's been i mean it's really been oh, great the whole staff has only been there just that same yeah. less than a year well oh, some so yeah. this is new in tarpon springs yeah well tarp you know brookdale itself <sighs> has been there for about going on almost eight years now uh-huh uh, -huh. uh the community it's been there for about 20 years, but no, some of myself as well as our director, uh, we're fairly new to the, to the you know the community. But I mean, I was born and raised in Tarpon. We're all pretty familiar. But some of the staff there, you know, they have some longevity. They've been there since the beginning. You know, going on 20 years actually. Oh yeah, that, that's everything. great. Yeah. What what is your position? I actually do the sales and the marketing. So I'm yeah, I'm all I'm the face. Uh, you know, Brookdale around in Tarpon. I'm trying to get all over, very Absolutely. as involved as I can with the chamber and and. Uh, a lot, you know, in the community as well as inside. That, that staff has done so much in that when when the committee was looking at the fact that there was, you know, looking at large businesses and then and it was a really tough decision, but the fact that they have done so much in the nine months to a year that this leadership staff has been there mm -hmm. um, resulted in this. But then when we took a look at how they worked out to the community and the criteria that you, I mean, they're everywhere, <laughs> they, um, and it was you know, that's when this came in, in into play and. Yeah. So it was just, and they were so busy the night of the awards um, banquet that Cody was the, the one who got to go. And I couldn't tell them that they had to come and be there for this presentation because all of these were surprises. And keeping that oh, a surprise yes. Was, yes. was tantamount. So, yes. of course, we took pictures and then he sent it on text back to another oh, yeah. event that they were at. Yeah. And oh. the next breakfast they came to, this came and they talked and we put it on Facebook. So, oh, yeah. um, but, but it's great. It but was a big deal. Some sense. of the things that they did, tell them what you guys did on Halloween. No, no, then, yeah, we do all sorts. Of, we are very involved. That's, you know, the award and just even in just the area alone. There's a lot of Brookdales in, you know, the United States as well as just the Tampa area. Yes. And, you know, we kind of do state out because we're pretty, you know, involved. We do all sorts of things. Like she mentioned with Halloween, you know, we had all the managerial staff. They dressed up and went all out for uh, the Wizard of Oz. And oh, they, how I cute. Used to see yeah. I mean, they had the Cowardly Lion, the Tin Man, and they were dancing on the side of the road. I mean, we were in the Christmas parade, marching with our residents in the bus and then the parade. Um, we do a lot. We have their the prom. senior prom. The you know, prom every year, that's, a, that's pretty cool. We have invite all sorts of professionals in the community as well. A lot, a lot of involvement through the chamber, and they come in and we, you know, match them up as a companion date. One of our residents, and we have a big steak dinner. We dancing, dress up like the prom, and pictures, and it's really, really nice event. That is exciting. Yeah. My date was a World War II vet who was there when one of the um, concentration camps were. Um, yeah were, um, what do you call it, um, when they come in and they release them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, I mean, amazing stories. And that, that was that was my day. And other ones had other other things. So yeah. it was, pre they're pretty interesting folks that are there. Oh, we had a ball. I can imagine. I can imagine. So how, so how long have you been a member with the chamber? Pretty much right away. I mean, right, that was one of the first did things you? I did. They said, you got to get in with the chamber because mm -hmm. they were 
pretty good involved, you know, before I got there. Oh, so yeah, that was yeah. one of the first had, groups actually I joined. Yeah, mm -hmm. they they joined just about the time that I came on board, and maybe a little bit before that, but were not particularly active. But back and forth, they've been members for years, but there's been some staff changes over the mm -hmm. course of the years. That's so, so fabulous. This is exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's very exciting. And you know. It, it's not just the good old boys, okay, in the in the chamber. Oh, I no. mean, look at this no, yeah. young, up and coming <laughs> professionals. Yeah. I love to see this. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah, great. Yeah, I love it. I mean, this is really this the best man gets job more around. hugs at that 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 um, senior center than anybody. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> He's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So, so, what are some of the favorite things? That you, I, I have a feeling that you just love everything about your oh, job. Right? This is the being the best job I've ever had. We have a great team. That's a big part of it. But do all sorts of good things. I mean, there even today uh, they took the bus and they're uh, a bunch of the residents went to the Hard Rock Casino. They're just getting oh, back right now waiting <laughs> in traffic. So they went uh, gambling. Yeah, I love it. They bring their their whole twenty five dollars down and <laughs> they have a good time with it. They that. They're sparing That's great. Them, yeah, that is. And we do so a lot great. of really good things and you know all sorts of like I said the events. Um, our team is really involved, I and mean, you'll see our health and wellness director. You walk in, there's the head of nursing. We'll be playing Rummy Cube and doing bingo, and you know it's, it really is a nice little family setting there, very yeah. homey place. Yeah. Plus the facility is beautiful. Live. It's really nice. Well, they Brookdale does a fantastic job with yeah. their people, and the I bet you're really learning a lot about the senior citizens, oh, aren't absolutely. you? Absolutely. Each one has such a story, don't they? No, they really do. I mean. Mm -hmm. Going into this, I always liked you know working with seniors ever since high school. Like I said, I'm from the Tarpon area, and even in high school, I was in some of these places that I you know go and do the marketing at, um, getting certified to be a CNA, and going to college, and now coming back and getting this opportunity in my position that I'm in. It's it's been awesome, and working with the seniors, it's like Jim mentioned before, really really helping people, and it's pretty cool. Wow, yeah. that is that is really incredible. I bet your folks are really proud too. Yeah, no. What they say about the trophy? Oh, I, 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 I won. I brought it, brought it to their house and showed them that night. I did. did you? Yeah. Oh so my even goodness! Before Kristen and the oh, team the first one to touch it, my yeah, parents saw it. I brought it over to their house and uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, that that is. That is fun. I, I just, I love talking about success and mm. to be able to yeah. achieve something like that for all of the criteria that's listed here. And of course, Eugene being part of this and being at the helm of the ship as uh, fairly new, you know, yeah, with the Tarpon Chamber. Here. So, but it's, I'm, I'm bringing some of the things that I've had um, from previous chambers, but also um, resurrecting some of the things from the chamber from previous years. But also, there was, there were some things in place. We're just sort of spiffing some of them up and. Mm -hmm. And the first year, I just we went through everything, and then now it's more okay. How can we improve on these various things? That makes um, sense. This, this, for instance, used to be a breakfast um, in August, and I thought, well, wait a minute. The, the happiest time of the year for everybody is right after snowbird season in the winter, when everybody's feeling very flush. So why not move this to a little bit more of a formal event? Move it to the e afternoon, so we turned it into a five to seven buffet and had it at the Yacht Club and just did it a little differently and made it a little bit more formal presentation of, of trophies and all instead of um, just kind of doing it. So it was, it was yeah. a lot of fun. I, I mean, yes. I, I'm, belong, I'm in a lot of different packed. groups. I do a lot of different networking all over you know, Pasco and Pinellas. This is one of my favorite things I belong to. We have fun. We really we do. do. And yeah. It's a great, great, great group. I mean, they're just, it's awesome. You know, right, and like Jim said, I mean, it's, you know, you'd really just have a tight-knit family kind of setting in Tarpon yeah. Springs. You know everyone. It's so yeah. nice. I mean, I go out, I'm not working just on a Saturday, and I'll see people in the streets. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is. Well, and I'm familiar with the tar uh, the Tarpon Yacht Club over there. Yeah. I've been mm -hmm. to some events there, so mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying. It sounds like you're just, you're really breathing a bit of new life and fresh air That's into what I'm just hoping to do bring some ideas from yeah. from another area but also um, just sort of compounding on what was already there yeah um, sorting through some things and um, this is the third chamber that I have run so um, and I've been a member of a chamber previously when I had a business so I come from both sides of it and that's good working with nice blend working with members that are of of all ages and all different kinds of businesses is one yeah. of the joys that I have mm -hmm. um, it, it's a lot of fun no, and it definitely people is. come with ideas I get ideas from from Cody's generation and it's like oh really oh okay let's give it a shot yeah you know, it is very yeah. diverse I mean especially you know, working with the seniors you see all different uh, yeah you know, different yeah. Ends of the spectrum well, it's pretty nice as well 
I'll bet that you are a breath of fresh air too. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, the young the younger generations have so much to offer us, especially when it comes to help with our devices. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, yeah, no, exactly. We had that conversation oh, earlier. Right. Yeah. They come, I'll, hear, I'll have my door shut. I'll hear them knocking. Ah, One of them really? get a new cell phone or something. Oh, yeah. They say, oh, you they stay there the at the guy. facility? You stay there? Well, no, I'm just my office, office right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I do, like I said, I do the marketing and the sales. I'm inside, outside. It probably outside. feels like home to you. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm there a you're lot. Home, you're home away from yeah, home. we say it all the time. They joke around, all the director, they say I'm the work son, so <laughs> we have a pretty good relationship. The work oh, son. Good. Yeah, that no, is adorable. That is good. good. Well, one of the things that surprised me about Brookdale the first time that I was there is the fact that you can have a pet there. And yeah. there's a, I mean, people are pretty independent in in a lot of aspects oh, yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I had not had a, a lot of exposure to an assisted living versus a nursing no, home or mm -hmm. um, independent living. Mm -hmm. So this was a nice blend. Yeah. When I saw mm -hmm. someone with their walker and it was a cat that was... A little Zoe, a little uh, Yorkie. <laughs> oh, little Yorkie, the dog, the dog. <laughs> and was coming down the hallway. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Going up, you know what you said as well. That's my job, really. That's what I do. I go out marketing, and that's I go to a lot of different groups at the hospitals, and I meet with a lot of seniors and explain, you know, we're not a nursing home. That's not what the assisted yeah. living is. Brookdale and Tarpon Springs is a standard licensed you know, assisted living community, and there's people, like she mentioned, that are very independent. They'll ride their bikes in the Pinellas Trail and they have them in their room. Yeah, they they go drive down to the gym. And there's people, as they get older, they need help with maybe showering or getting mm -hmm. dressed, and we're there to help. You know, so it's really a wide spectrum, and it's, it's nice. You know, it's nice to come in. And, and they don't have to worry about cutting the grass or Nothing. going grocery shopping or cooking yeah. meals. Don't sit back and relax like you're on yeah. a vacation while you're here, really. That's great. So really. basically, we all have just less than a minute remaining, but mm -hmm. basically you're getting out in the community really educating people so that they know it's not a nursing home. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. really many stages before that. So it's independent living and lots and lots of activities. That's what seniors need in their elderly years, right? I, of course. Keeps I Keeps the brain yeah. active, keeps yeah. them active physically. Every month I do at least two different, at least two different events. Well, I'll invite, I have an ice cream social next Friday and I have a, a cookout barbecue and I just invite different seniors in the area. We send out mailers, come on in. Just, I like to show you around. Just, you know, give you answer any of your questions and just show you exactly what it is. You know, we're proud. We, hands we're on. Proud. Yeah. Yeah. Hands on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great, Cody. Well, yeah. congratulations Thank you. on your trophies yeah. and your presence <laughs> in the neighborhood, and we'll Thank hope to see much. you again. Absolutely. Thank you, you will. He says he's out in the community. Oh, yeah, the hell, see me around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> see me anytime. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, we're going to take a brief little time out. When we come back, we have more guests here right on My Chamber TV. So don't go anywhere.
Hi, I'm Jerry from Hot Locks Hair Salon. We are conveniently located at 13414 US Highway 19 in Hudson. I've been a local hairstylist in our community for the last 34 years, seven of which I was an educator. Our passion is the artistry of hair, and Hollox is here to help you achieve your perfect image. You can call us at 727-514-9978. Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV, the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. I'm Barbara Marville Kelly, thanks for joining us again. We have the Tarpon Chamber of Commerce today and I'm so excited to have them for the very first time. They will be coming back, I believe the fourth Wednesday. Wednesday of every month. So mark your calendar and you can see what's happening in Tarpon Springs and uh, see some of the business owners and see why, if you're a business owner, it would be great to be a member of the Tarpon Chamber of Commerce. We have Jean Hungerville with me, who is the president and CEO of Tarpon Chamber of Commerce. And we also have from one amazing find, we have Leslie McDade. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. You are a woman of many talents. I try. You try. <laughs> I think you're succeeding quite nicely. Tell us about the one amazing find. Well, we're a consignment furniture store on uh, Tarpon Avenue uh, downtown, and we do lots of things in there. Um, we have the furniture. I also have a painting studio. I teach Annie Sloan chalk paint. I do for people. I will do furniture pieces for them. We do lots of make and take classes, lots of things happening in the store. How long have you been there? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. How long have you been a member with the chamber? Three and a half years. Oh, so you joined right up front. That's what we had to do. We're in the, we're in the sandbox, we're all gonna play nicely and that's the first thing we did, is joined. Wow, I have to come over and visit with you. Absolutely. I haven't been over in Tarpon, I live there and I haven't been over there in a while but there's so much happening. So I've just gotta make the time. So, so, how has the the chamber helped you? You jumped right in and joined because you heard that was the thing to do. Well, part of it is I'm not from Tarpon, and I don't know a lot of people. We moved here from Toronto about eight years ago, and this is, uh, I had a different business that I worked from home, and opening this business, I literally didn't know anybody, and this is a way for me to push my um, boundaries, if you will, my comfort level to meet more people because I'm not really as uh, comfortable being out in, in networking, if you will. So uh, in order to be part of a community, I needed to join the community that's going to teach me where to go, who to talk to, and how to be more involved. And, and I've loved every minute of it. That is that is the perfect way to do it, is to meet people through the Chamber of Commerce. And I'll tell you, the Chamber of Commerce, I had no idea how in-depth a Chamber of Commerce could be until I started doing these shows five years ago and doing the interviews really you know nice open and organic interviews with people like yourself you come here from Toronto new new absolutely not a soul you are one brave girl got to do what you got to do got to do what you got to do hear that ladies <laughs> <laughs> step up and step out it's all you <laughs> I think that's fabulous that really is. Mm -hmm. So tell us about chalk painting. Well, Annie Sloan chalk paint is a product that I rep, and she's sort of the guru of chalk paint. Uh, so it's it's a part of my business that um, I talk to a lot of people about. I have a lot of um, examples. People want to do their own furniture. They want something refinished. Uh, so many people aren't from the area. They move here from the north. They have all this lovely furniture. and. The dark furniture from up in Pennsylvania or New York or anywhere north doesn't really translate when you move to Florida. And we're all about the beaches. We're all about light and fresh and airy and, and lots of people are changing their styles. So instead of running out and buying all new furniture, I teach you how to make your existing furniture become the style that you want it to be because most of it is very good quality furniture and it's a little bit 
more reasonable to, to update it than it is to buy new stuff. Mm -hmm. So so basically, are these some samples of what you've done? Well, and th what these are is I do uh, make and take classes, so what we call them is um, we have different projects that you can come in and make them, design them, um, and take them home. But all the products that I use, I only use Annie Sloan chalk paint. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also started going into different restaurant establishments, and we do these these type of classes at that establishment. So mm. they can have a glass of wine, they can have a little appetizer, um, and they make something, and then they take it home, and I just walk you through every single step. Hmm. And is it pretty easy for, like, anybody can do? Uh, if you're going to hold a paintbrush, you can do it, I promise. Oh, I love to hear that. that yes. That's great. A lot of people do want to get into doing their own thing, and I, and I understand what you're saying about people moving from up north and a lot of the dark woods, the mahoganies, the red woods, the oaks, and all of that. And it, it suits their style up north, and it's, it's very expensive. And a lot of these people have been in their, or sorry, a lot of people have had this furniture for so long that they don't really want to replace it, and the quality isn't there like it used to be. So so you've bought this beautiful it's bedroom set 30 years ago, solid wood, and you're not going to replace it uh, cheaply for something that's better. So they'd much rather update it and change the style. So that's how I can help you. You should see some of the things that she has done for people. That you're, I'm, I've come close a couple of times thinking, oh, I'm going to buy that. And then when I come back, it's gone. Um, because it's something that um, has classic lines. Mm -hmm. It's solid wood, beautiful, but it's been redone and it's just it's just got a fresh new approach to it and refinishing used to be strip it all down put a new I coat know. of stain on it put the shellac or the varnish on it now with the these products it's um it's a whole different ball game it's and everything comes it's just light and fresh and i love walking in there just when i she's very close to the chamber office so when i walk go for a walk to get a break i walk through and look at some of the things that are partially done that she's been working on or some of the things that are completed or even the things that are for sale because it's constantly turning over um the whole shop is very fresh and bright but um, I particularly like watching pieces emerge from their old life to the new life. Oh, that sounds exciting, and it I'm is. sure you do. Now, before you moved down here, did you have this business in Toronto? Not at all. No? What nope. made you get into this? Um, well, I needed to do something a little bit more creative. I needed to get out of the house. We had a consulting type of business we moved here with. wasn't really sticking. Um, and we just happened upon this. My husband and I have owned multiple businesses in the past, so I'm not... Um, new at owning businesses, but I've never owned a retail store in my life. Never wanted one. Didn't want to work this hard. Didn't want to work seven days a week, and I've never had more fun. See that when you do what you love, it's it's not work. No, mm. and I love teaching, and I and very surprising to me because I'm that's not something I would have ever thought. Um, we get a lot of people in. I talk to a lot of people. I know a lot of people in the community, and just like Cody was saying, I can now walk around the community and know a lot more people than I ever would have had I been doing my previous business. So I. I love it. I, I uh, enjoy, I wake up every morning looking forward to going to work. And that's the way it should be. And you being know? part of the Tarpon family. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And you're right there in the hub of everything. It's been nice seeing Tarpon emerge uh, when we opened downtown. was a little quieter, going through a little bit of a restructuring, if you will. And lots of things have happened. And it's, it's, seen, it's nice for people to re, um, renew what Tarpon was and it, the new restaurants coming and the events that are happening and locals come in the store all the time going, I had no idea you were here. Yep. Are you new? Uh, you know, I didn't know these different events are happening or, or these different restaurants are around or this is what's available right in my backyard. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're working very hard to make our locals love where they live even more. Absolutely. There's nothing as, as rewarding and as quaint is going downtown and checking out the little shops. I know there's antique, the antique shops over there. And just going mm -hmm. in and out of these shops, just taking a day, go out to lunch with the girls and, you know, just poke around in there, take your time. It's relaxing. Lots to do and lots to see and lots of oh, little okay. um, tidbits of places you didn't even think existed anymore. Very that's exciting right. down there. That's right. Yep. And the one thing that's different about Tarpon Springs are the sponge docks down there. You know, each, each town has their own amenities and their own special little niches, so their own little corners where you can go and enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. You must be delighted running the show over there at that chamber. Well, learning all of the various pieces of it is, yes. is, is amazing because I'm looking at it with a new set of eyes and can then say, oh, well, wait a minute, have we ever tried this or have we ever done this or why did this not get carried forward? Oh, okay, well, let's 
give it a little bit different twist, like we were talking about with the award ceremony. Leslie is also on my board and my executive committee as an officer, so we were talking through some of, she's been part of helping the chamber reemerge and going through some of these, these changes. So, um, yeah, it's exciting. It's a lot of fun. So you, ha you have the, the, the beauty of the input as well as having your business there. I think it's fabulous. Well, and I figured that my um, thought process, if I wanted anything to change, then I better step up and do something instead of just giving my advice. I'd better be willing to step in and do something about things that I want to change. And it's been nice to have uh, input in creating, helping to create this little other area of the community and learn so much about the Greek community. It's it's we have great restaurants and great oh, events, yes. and, and it's a little kind of hole in the wall that people forget about. But once you come, you you wonder why you don't go more often. Exactly. Well, I want to thank you for joining us. One amazing find. You need to check it out right down in the heart of Tarpon Springs. It's so great to have you with us and hope to see you again. I'm going to come visit with you. I appreciate that. All right. Thanks yeah. for joining us thank today. You. And thank you for joining us. We'll be right back more on My Chamber TV. Hi, I'm Jerry from Hot Locks Hair Salon. We are conveniently located at 13414 US Highway 19 in Hudson. I've been a local hairstylist in our community for the last 34 years, seven of which I was an educator. Our passion is the artistry of hair, and Hot Locks is here to help you achieve your perfect image. You can call us at 727-514-9978.
Hi everyone, welcome back into my chamber TV. Tarpon Chamber of Commerce is in the spotlight the whole hour today. I'm Barbara Marvel Kelly, and we happen to have Jean Hungerville, who happens to be the president and CEO, and only been doing this for about a year, but you've certainly made a, a difference. So, so far, so good. And we're going to hear more about this in the next segment, but we go, want to go ahead and introduce Tim Kafalis. Did yeah. I get it right? Yeah, you sure awesome. did. Awesome. From Thank AHEPA. You. American Helig Educational Progressive Association. That's close Did enough. I get That's that close enough? Good. I okay. know. I didn't name it. It's an international <laughs> organization. <clears throat> well, I understand that uh, congratulations are underway for you for the uh, Nonprofit of the Year. Yes. So and congratulations. Thank, I want to thank Jean and the staff for naming us. Yeah, uh, it made us feel good, <laughs> and it, it, it gave us attention that we needed. It was actually well, that, a committee that did that, that yes. um, really did a lot of research. It was yeah. well-deserved. That's really fabulous. Yeah. Tell, tell us about the business. Okay, well, we're a nonprofit. Our main, we have a, a big house on uh, Tarpon Avenue, 20 West Tarpon Avenue near the bayou, and we have dinners every Friday night, and the money goes, we're all volunteers, and the money goes to uh, fundraising for uh, scholarships and help in the community and things like that. Anybody that calls and needs help, uh, we we sent money when uh, there was a, the uh, the twin towers went down. There's a there was a Greek church next to it, and we gave money towards that. Oh. And uh, internationally, we've given millions in, internationally as a group of twenty thousand. We're only a small part of it here, a very small part. So most of our money stays locally. We do scholarships. We awarded this year five thousand dollars in scholarships and uh, a lot of local giving and we are a primary partner of the Shepherd Center and uh, we help them with some things and they help us with others and we do dinners for them and things like that whenever they need us. How long have you been with them? Uh, I've been about, I'd say 11 years, but I've been president, this is my third term, so this is third time term as president and uh, I've been involved for about 11 years and uh, like I said, we're all volunteers and as it goes in any organization, when there's volunteers, it's usually year after year the same people, and we hope to bring more people in. And uh, we are uh, Greek-based, but we have a lot of non-Greek members, and it's open to the uh, non-Greek community, and non uh, it's not just Greeks anymore. Um, started in 1926 in Tarpon, and we've been in this location about 35 or 40 years. And we own the home, and we're very fortunate in that respect. Okay. And uh, so we're, we're, we have uh, an annual banquet where we bring about probably 250 happens from all over the world. From We've had from California, Canada, Greece, all over where they've come, Australia even, um, and come to our banquet and spend a week during Epiphany. And we have functions for them to do here. And they have a golf tournament at Innisbrook for it. And it's a... It's, it brings a lot of people in, so this is good for us to be a part of the chamber. Um, it gives them access to us, with you know, through the chamber, as uh, they can reach reach out to us through the chamber from all over. Oh, absolutely! Sounds like a very, very strong organization. Uh, yeah, nas strong. internationally, they are. Right now, they just sent us an email. They're doing fundraising for the to help with the fires in Greece, <coughs> uh, the loss of about seventy people and. Oh property and then uh, they just raised two hundred forty thousand dollars <coughs> for uh, service dogs and gave that award last week we got an email about that so it's it's very well very well funded and do a lot of a lot of things and we try to help when we can you know this is so exciting and I'm so glad that you're tuned in today because who knew how would you know unless you tuned in to my chamber TV or you were a member of the Chamber of Commerce or you marched into the Chamber of Commerce and announced yourself saying you need some help or you're looking to find a particular business. Turpin Chamber of Commerce is here. They're going to be here every fourth Wednesday to share what's happening in the community. And I'll tell you, this is just, I had no idea and I live in Turpin. Well, one of the things that I first got to know Tim through was Friday Night Fish Fries. And I was you know, getting the information out, and I remember one time I was coming out, I was going around to my car to leave, and it was late on a Friday, and I looked up, and I just walked in and said, okay, how do I do this? I went home, I, I did carry out because I just wanted to go home and kick my shoes off, but I walked out with this laden 
hands of a fi giant piece of fish, all mm -hmm. the trimmings with it, and had leftovers the next day. It was <gasps> delicious. Wow. And then Mother's Day breakfast, that was, yeah. that was terrific. Yeah, they we, did a Mother's Day breakfast as well. So all mothers had free dinner, had free breakfast rather. And, and we did the same for Father's Day. We had much better turnout for Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So can I, I, can I just ask what you charge for your fish dinners? Our fish dinners are $12. You get a, a great big portion of fish, a salad, two sides. Uh, we have a, we call it our signature dinner and it's a traditional but we, we can give other sides. We usually have another side plus we have another entree, a meat entree usually and everything's home cooked. Uh, we have uh, beets, the Greek style beets with, uh, they call it scordoya, which is the uh, mashed potatoes with garlic, and they're served at room <gasps> it's temperature. It's delicious. It's really like a dip for the fish, but we give a, it's, it's a side order. And uh, salad, dessert, coffee for $12, and then uh, now we're open Sundays for a different menu. We have uh, co uh, coconut shrimp and uh, chicken and pork souvlaki over rice for $8, and we've kind of cut back the portions a little bit because a lot of people on the weekend, uh, want a little bit less to eat or they're going somewhere or after church they you know want to get home and not be too too full but on friday nights that's our our big thing is and for 35 years we've been doing that in this location and uh we do we do well with it more so during the season than during the off season of course but the chamber has helped us to get known and this was really a big thing for us to be acknowledged. And how long have you been with the chamber? Did uh, I ask that? No, we've the organization we've been involved about I'm going to say 5 or 6 years. Um, about 5 or 6 years and we've been we joined about that time. And then before that it was off and on cuz as presidents come and officers go, things get forgotten and ways change so we hope it'll stay cuz it's been a good relationship for us. Um, if I send them an email like we're having a special something special, it's instantly put on the to all the members of the chamber, mm -hmm. and we get support from that. And uh, they give us also advice too. You know, they they say, well, why don't you do this one night? We'd like to have that. Or uh, so we've even adjusted our hours because some of the chamber members were saying that it'd be nice if we were open a little bit longer. What and, what are the hours uh, now? Five until eight. We serve five, five until, until eight. eight. And, and what did they what? They were six to seven. And because again, we we're all volunteers, oh, yeah. and it got yeah. to be we were sure. cooking, you know. And we also do these memorial dinners for when somebody passes away. And we have a, we can seat about 130, 250 people. So we we also are available for luncheons and things like that. And again, all the money goes back to helping the community, and um, you know, the the we don't and and to maintain the house, of course, but um, but we do give back. <laughs> And well. so your house is at 20 West Tarpon Avenue. Correct. Okay. Right near the bayou. One of the things, though, that he has completely left out, and I really want you to talk about, is what happened during the hurricane. Huh? When we were discussing the nonprofits, and there are quite a number of them in the area, um, yes, the scholarships are very, very important. But during the hurricane, this organization did an amazing thing. We, we decided before the hurricane came that, even if we didn't have power, we would be open because we can cook. We have propane fryers and grills, and we could cook during that. I said, we'll provide meals. So our chef, myself, and our vice president, George Capitanis, uh, said, well, let's go ahead and open. We provided free meals for anybody that came in. We put signs out. We contacted the churches and for about a week. But we only lost our electric for about, I'd say, five or six hours. There was a hanging line. We didn't report because we didn't want them to come deactivate it. So we still had power to keep the air conditioning on and, and to uh, keep food cold. But we were prepared. And we, we had hot, hot food and... Uh, cold drinks for the whole time and air conditioning people came and we have Wi-Fi they were able to use their Wi-Fi wow. still and uh, we tried to get the word out and we I'd say we had uh, between three and six hundred people come in and, Did it's, you? and uh, no we, we didn't take donations for the food we said just eat you know and uh, they came back and uh, we first responders came in and uh, anybody that came in we even sent them home with food and it was hot we even made homemade soup uh, some people were on the go, and you know, so you know, they really. Uh, it was. It was. We appreciate that they came, and that's what we're there for. And we've helped in many ways. If, and hopefully, it never happens again. But if it oh, does, we'll be there. Yeah. And uh, that's what 
are, are what we're really there for, is civic responsibility and mm -hmm. to help in, in, to, in education. So well, you know, this is so good to know because you, you just never know who you're going to run into on the street that needs help. And, I, I mean, two boys and their dog were homeless. And at a time where I could have known about this, it, that's why I love doing these shows, is it raises so much awareness in the, in the community to get somebody a warm meal and just to know what you guys, that you're there and mm -hmm. that you are giving back at, to the magnitude that you're doing in this community. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for this way to show it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just to the, say the, what the we do. scholarships are, are particularly important. Don't you yeah. usually give out four? Yeah, we, we usually give out a, four, but this year we gave out another thousand. And I was sitting at a city council meeting, and they gave them an award for for that. But they came up with the extra. They had five very deserving students, and so they just passed the hat and came up with the extra thousand dollars between all of these volunteers in order to not have someone not get this. Um, I was just absolutely so impressed with this organization. Wow. They just Thank do what needs to be done. Yeah, yeah. The two of the two of the scholarship recipients were graduating their second year of college while they were graduating high school. And so it's, I mean, times have changed. So they were in high school and finishing their second year at St. Pete College and, uh, and getting ready to start their third year of college. Now that's uh, motivation. You know, yeah. I, don't I know how love they do to it. hear that. I don't know how they did it, but they do it. One was valedictorian. Oh my. Yeah. That is yeah. crazy good. Yeah. I love yeah. to hear that. Yeah. Well, you are a delight and it's a HEPA over on uh, on Tarpon Avenue, 20 West Tarpon Avenue, and it's a home over there. You right. open it up to the to the different uh, things that you're doing, that, which is really, really enlightening. I'm so glad to know that. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. Can I come us. over and visit you sometime? Sure. We're op this Friday we're having a private memorial, but uh, normally we're open Friday uh, 6 until 8. Okay, Sunday well, I won't crash open. it Friday yeah, then. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe the next Friday. <laughs> there will be a lot of people, so nobody will notice. <laughs> nobody will notice. <laughs> And one of our longtime members. Uh, well, you're not passed. far from where I live. I live yeah. like not far. I, I yeah. think I want to check that out. It's just yes. I just want to have that just off the get bayou. Get hands right on off right the off the bayou. bayou. Beautiful location. Yeah. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you very much. And thank you for having us. Check it out and uh, share the message out there in your community of Tarpon Springs and even the surrounding areas. We're going to take another break and we're coming back. And Jean and I are going to find out exactly what she's doing over there to make all these great things happen. So stay right where you are.
Hi, I'm Jerry from Hot Locks Hair Salon. We are conveniently located at 13414 U.S. Highway 19 in Hudson. I've been a local hairstylist in our community for the last 34 years, seven of which I was an educator. Our passion is the artistry of hair, and Hotlocks is here to help you achieve your perfect image. You can call us at 727-514-9978. can't get into that on the air. Don't ask me. Hi, everyone. Welcome back into My Chamber TV, the heartbeat of our community. I'm Barbara Marville Kelly, and today we are featuring the Tarpon Springs Chamber of Commerce. And for the first time, we get a chance to meet Jean Hungaville, who is president and CEO. Thank you for co-hosting with me today and, and really giving us an update on the changes with the I, I just want to call it the new, uh, the new Chamber of Commerce over there in Turpin. So, so I know you have a lot to share with us, so let's tell everybody what's going on, some of the differences that you've made. I mean, already we've been doing the businesses of the year. I mean, look at this be beautiful trophy. Congratulations on your position. Oh, thank you. I'm having, I, when we were talking about having a great job to go to, I love getting up and going to work every day. Isn't that great? Um, it's one of those things where when I walk out the door, I have a smile on my face. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I come back and at the end of the day, I do too. Sometimes I'm just tired, but it's one of those things where yeah. it's a good tired. Yeah, good tired. I love that. Exactly. Yes. Because what we're doing is we're we're rebranding everything. We're reemerging the chamber. Um, it got a little tired there for a while, and I think... Um, there were some changes that needed to be made and you know that some direction was lost and i think bringing in a new set of eyes and ears and somebody with experience on a different area of the country um i'm just bringing in some some new things i'm also taking a look at some of the other things that we've been that were done photo scavenger hunt you heard jim bring yes. that up mm -hmm. um was something that was done a few years ago and I looked at that and I thought, hmm, this is kind of interesting. So we're doing it again, but with a little different twist to it. Um, and it's it's going to be fun. Um, I'm the, the Fine Arts um, Festival. We um, have, have reorganized that and we're doing some more on that. I started actually about a month before that large Fine Arts Festival. You talk about intimidating. Oh my goodness. We had 18 to 20,000 people coming through over the course of two days, 250 artists. It was pretty much all set up. I didn't have an assigned task. I was supposed to just go around and learn over the course of the three or four days with two days of setup ahead of time. How does this thing work? Because it was going to be mine the next year. And, and now it's okay. yours. <laughs> okay, I can, I, can, I can learn this, but uh, lots and lots of moving parts. And I run a couple of seafood festivals back in Virginia where I came from on the Eastern Shore. So I knew about large festivals, but not multi-day festivals and not art. Oh. And art is a whole different animal. The, it's, it's fabulous. Different types of media, different things that are judged. We have judges and juries that do things beforehand. Um, it's a, it's a, we are right now starting to meet for next year's event. And the next year will be March 9th and 10th. Um, it will be now stabilized ends to the second weekend in March of every year. Uh, we've usually floated around between March and April because um, we've had Greek Easter, American Easter, Greek Independence Day with a parade either the weekend before or the weekend after, depending on how New York wants to do that because of officials coming from um, the old country and, and, and all of these moving parts. When I left this last event on the, um, it was in the end of March in this year, I didn't know when next year's event was going to be because there were some other decisions that were out of my hands that had to be made. So we had artists leaving that I couldn't give a save the date card to. Mm, so okay. the committee, the person who handles the artist and another person who was working closely with the artist, we sat down and did some research as to 
what events are going on all over the state that other artists go to? Not arts and crafts, but fine arts, because we have, it's juried. Leslie, who was here um, earlier, mm -hmm. handles our merchandise for that. She's on that committee, a very vital part of it. Um, again, another set of new eyes coming in looking at it. Um, we actually have now st settled on that date because it's the week before Winter Park, and a lot of our artists like to go to the big Winter Park Fine Arts Festival. So we were working in conjunction with, okay, you can come to ours and then go on to that. And then the next weekend, there's another one. And didn't want to be on top of anything. We're not going to be involved in where, when are the Easter's falling, because they're very late this year. Now they're going to be the end of April. And it's just taking it to the second week in March um, will we'll just stabilize all of it so that people can, artists can then plan. We are looking to really up the quality of our artists. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be relaying out the park. Uh, there were quite a number of trees that were lost during the hurricane. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to be down there with the people that do the layout uh, on our team and walking the, 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 the park, looking at where do we lay this out? How do we do this better? What would be... Um, a better spot that would be worth more than another one over here. How do we take certain people away from the, the music so that, and, and just all kinds of little sure. details sure. that I didn't realize were all involved in that. Yeah, um, that's a lot. Well, you know, having done seafood festivals, I'm used <clears throat> to standing in a truck and ordering 1,700 um, pounds of shrimp, depending on how many tickets we've sold. I don't have to worry about that. That's, we have someone who handles all of that, who's an outside vendor, and he coordinates all that from St. Pete Concessions and has been doing it for years. But um, I'm excited. We're making improvements on um, that, and there'll be more to come. I'll be talking about that over the next few months as, as things develop. But we are starting now and getting the information out to the artists, and then they'll start a jury process so that we, by the time we start in January, we'll know pretty much who our artists are going to be coming so we can start advertising some of that and getting some pre-sales done. Oh, absolutely. And that's going to be something new for us, too, is getting oh. pre-sales of... Uh, something called a patron's award and we're working on developing all of that and Leslie's going to be part of that as well and it's people who say I'm going to commit to spending a thousand or five thousand dollars on art this year they buy a patron's award and then that money is already pre-sold we don't know who they're going to buy from but well, that sounds they, like fun. But they have they've committed. committed. They've committed to doing that. They get a ribbon and or two or three, depending on the increments, and then they will go around and they'll purchase different pieces. Put a white ribbon up that says this is um, somebody who's been selling um, from the pre-sales, and that brings good quality artists in as well because they know people are committed to purchasing because they're not just there yeah. for for the fun of it. They're right. there for the fun of it as well as that they earn a living at this. Most mm -hmm. of them, this is mm -hmm. their primary thing going from show to show to show. Of course. So of course. that's the Chamber's largest fundraiser um, of the year and that's something that um, we need to grow. Sponsorships are going to be available for that as we're developing, developing them something we haven't really done much at all before. So we're going to be looking at more on that. And we'll have to talk about that because you're going to be coming in now officially mm -hmm. every fourth Wednesday of every month, Tarpon Chamber of Commerce. You'll need to tune in. We only have less than two minutes remaining, um, but we do want to invite you to check out the Tarpon Chamber of Commerce. Jean is doing a fabulous job already, and I can just tell your excitement is just overflowing to be able to tap into some new ideas and breathe that bit of fresh air and new life into the chamber. And I'm excited because I live in Tarpon Springs. I want to see what's going on. Oh, well, on. then we have to get you to come to some of this a as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Maybe we'll bring the camera and get out, get out oh, on site. Oh, that would be so fun. Yes. Yeah, exciting. So we have just another minute remaining. Do you have another couple of mentions? Yep, I sure do. Some of the events that we have coming up, and I'll talk about how we've rebranded things when we're maybe here next yes. month. But yes. just coming up um, tonight, we're at the Leap of Ratner Museum. Um, that is our chamber happy hour. It's from 5 to 7. If anyone is a would like to come to that, um, come and be my guest. Come and see what we're doing. Um, Selena Roman has a show that is ongoing there. Um, that is tonight from 5 to 7 at the Leaper Ratner at St. Petersburg College. Tomorrow, though, we were talking, Jim was talking about ribbon cuttings. Mm -hmm. 1 o'clock tomorrow, we are going to be doing a ribbon cutting for um, Currents 
second space, which is their new locate their new section that is next door for special events. Um, they've been testing the waters a little bit for the fa last few months, but we are doing the official ribbon cutting on that tomorrow at one o'clock. So anyone is welcome to come to that. That's going Great. to be very exciting. So those are some of the things that we just have going on just this week. Just this week. Just this week. <laughs> if it's Wednesday, there is something going on in the Tarpon Springs Chamber because I have moved all of the events to Wednesdays. It's either breakfast, lunch, after hours or something. Always something. Always, Always something, something on Wednesday. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you. Congratulations. I look thank forward you. to seeing you next month. We're going to have fun. We will. Thanks for joining us today on My Chamber TV. See you next time.